You're listening to the Moose and the Loose, your 10 minutes action packed financial podcast with your host, Mikey Hu. Hey, what's up, Mike Moose? Mike from the Moose on the Loose. I hope you are doing well today. Um, I thought of looking at a lot of stocks earnings over the past two months. Uh, you know that we are finishing the earnings season, and I just thought of giving you some uh, comments and and thoughts on on companies that increased their dividend um, over uh, this first quarter of the year. Because uh, I know uh, you look at the market, you see that it's quite high. You probably fear that we are about to enter into crash mode or a bear market. Not too sure what's going to happen there. Uh, since the beginning of the year, the TSX is up almost 4%. The S&P 500 is up over 7%, uh, definitely supported by tech stocks as the NASDAQ is also up almost 7%. So a lot of growth. And when the market goes down one day, eventually, uh, one thing that can help you not to panic is to focus on those companies that shows you, that tells you it's all right, we are in a good position and we are able to grow our dividend going forward. Uh, so a, a few companies that um, I was quite surprised, double digit uh, dividend grower uh, over the past few months. Uh, first one, Metro. It's been a while though. It's uh, they increased their dividend by 11% though at the beginning of the year. So Metro is quite interesting as it's like one of the smallest grocery stores in Canada that is listed. So definitely smaller than Loblaws and smaller than Empire. Uh, but it has its great niche in Quebec and in Ontario. They're doing well with Jean Coutu and Brunet, which are, are their two, um, their two drugstores, uh, brand. And they offered another 11% dividend increase. Most of the time, they increased their dividend double digits. So it's a low yield, high growth stock. So quite interesting. And this is probably the one that I would add to my portfolio if I would be looking for a grocery store. On the other side, the downside of grocery stores is the easy money has been pretty much gone. And unfortunately, they face a lot of competition. So it's not necessarily going to be super easy for them going forward. Um, another one that increases dividend by a large number was Stella Jones. So the market was somewhat disappointed by the uh, their earnings, even though they reported good numbers, but it was not enough. So it's sometimes it's about expectations. So if the market priced the stock according to higher expectations, well, then you get a little bit of a drop. But what I uh, remembered from this uh, quarter is the dividend growth of 22%. So this is a stock that even though had an amazing run in uh, 23, I still think there's a lot of room there. I added it to my portfolio at the end of 23, um, mentioned that earlier. So definitely one that you want to look at um, more resilient than most material companies because they sell utility poles and railway ties that regardless of the economy will still have a pretty solid demand as a like foundation for their business model. Uh, another one on the list, uh, Thompson Ruther. I don't talk about this one too much. Uh, Thompson Ruther as like most of its business are uh, evolving around subscriptions. So for accounting firms, law firms, uh, they are making a lot of money with that. So I think it's like more than 80% of their revenues are recurring revenues, which is amazing and definitely great to increase their dividend. So dividend is up 10%. It has been a long-term dividend grower. I, I'm still skeptical about their growth potential, but they're kind of like make me 
lie right now. They make me doubt about my my skepticism because definitely they are thriving. Uh, so maybe I should spend a little bit more time on this one going forward. But yeah, not necessarily on my radar, but definitely a pretty solid business based on subscriptions um, and sticky business too, as a law firm accounting firms do not tend to change their subscriptions very that often. Um, another one that is a bit surprising considering that the market, the economy is expensive expected to slow down is TFI International, a trucking company, um, that grow by acquisition business model. And, and it's great for them when they enter into an economic slowdown because many of their competitors will die or sell very cheap. So um, it's a great opportunity for TFI International to grab some shares. But in the meantime, I don't expect their revenue and earnings to skyrocket in 24. And yet they offered a dividend increase of 14%. Uh, which is definitely pretty solid, right? Uh, so this one is more volatile, though. It is a favorite stock pick at Dividend Stocks Rock for several years. I actually uh, highlighted it back in 2016 uh, to my members, added to our uh, DSR portfolio models as well back then, and it definitely was a pretty good move so far. Um, Toromont Industry, uh, plus 11.6%, almost 12% increase, another Another solid dividend grower if you want to make a bet on the spending and infrastructure in Canada. Definitely, this one would be an interesting play. Uh, one that surprised me, uh, but that was not a double-digit increase, was QSR, a uh, restaurant brand. Do you know the uh, the famous brands like Burger King, Popeyes, Tim Hortons? Uh, they increased their dividend by 5%, which is higher than usual. Um, pretty solid dividend growth uh, for, this, for this year. The the company shows a decent and stable business model doing business across the world, managing like top quality brands as well. And they finally were able to generate some growth. So they struggled a little bit for with the Morton for a while, but now it seems that they are on the growth path. So that's an interesting one too. Um, got a few from the entrance company uh, industries. So um, IAG, uh, IA Financial, 7.2%. Um, small player, I would not be my first pick. I would probably prefer to go with Sun Life or Great West Life for like the bigger one, but definitely IA Financial did a pretty good job with a 7% increased dividend. Um, Intact Financial plus 10%. This one is definitely a low yield, high growth stocks. They have made some interesting acquisition over the past few years uh, in Europe and in the US. So opening doors across um, new uh, new countries. They are a leader in Canada as well. And the more data that you have in the entrance business, the better it is because then you are becoming a better underwriter. So this one pretty as a generous dividend increase, but not the first time they go for a double digit bump. Um, one that was a bit surprising, not definitely not uh, one of my favorite one, but Man Life came in strong with a strong quarter, uh, great performance on the market this year. Is it going to finally unlock that value that investors have been talking about for the past 15 years? Maybe it is, but now this the stock is going up. The dividend was increased by almost 10%, so 9.59. Uh, pretty solid. Um, I'm, I'm a bit surprised, to be honest. This one, I see that as a dud. I never really had fate on this one, uh, mostly because it was one of the big three, but the only one to cut their dividend following the financial crisis of 2008. So Great West and Sun Life just kept it as is for a few years and then um, resumed their dividend growth policy. Policy, while Man Life just said, you know what, eh, we're running into some problems, and uh, the then seems to be um, over. So first time the stock price crossed thirty bucks mark, so now trading above thirty two dollars since. Be ready for that since two thousand and eight. Uh, so yeah, a long comeback for this one, but could be interesting moving forward. We'll see how it goes. Um, among the disappointing um, increase that I can notice, uh, Bell, I already discussed this one, up 3%. Usually uh, it's supposed to be 5 so this one is definitely a red flag. Uh, Ryo Ken, 
um, increase of 2% for its distribution. I'm already not a fan of Ryokan, but like a 2% increase after the cut they had a few years ago. Um, not recovering from the dividend cut yet. So not impressed by this one either. And Magna International up 3%, 3.3% increase. Uh, definitely disappointing as well. Uh, Prudent management, I guess, but still I was expecting a little bit more from Magna International. So going forward, it will be on my list to watch. Yeah, sorry guys, this one didn't go through well with on my throat. I don't know why. I'm going to end the podcast with a major increase though. Uh, the largest one that I've seen so far this quarter, um, Imperial Oil. I'm not a fan of oil, but this one definitely vertically integrated a subsidy of ExxonMobil. Uh, up 20%. The dividend increase was up 20%. A rare company in the energy industry that is able to go through oil bust and maintain their dividend growth policy. So if you want to go for the energy sector and you're looking for dividend growers, CNQ, Canadian Natural Resources, and Imperial Oil should probably be on your list to do some due diligence and dig forward. All right, Moose, that's enough for today. I hope that I gave you a few... Um, Interesting uh, stock to look to put on your list. So those are dividend growers. Could be interesting. And we're going to talk again tomorrow. So stay tuned and stay invested. Hey, welcome to Disclaimer. If you're listening to The Moose and the Loose, you cannot really expect me to give you buy or sell recommendation or financial advice, right? You're here for fun. You're here for information and some entertainment. But I am not your financial advisor. I am not your broker. So therefore, I'm not liable if you're losing money after listening to the podcast. If you're looking for some advice, go see a professional. If not, you can enjoy the show and do your due diligence after it.